Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam simulation or simply put a college exercise that deals with section 351. Isabella, Mike and Benjamin consolidated their individual businesses and established Phoenix Incorporated. So simply put, each one of them might have their own business with some assets. What they did, they combined their, business, they combined their assets and they established a new corporation. On February 2nd, Isabella trades her asset basis of 60 worth of 200,000 for 200 shares of the new corporation, Phoenix. On March 20th, Mike swaps his assets, 80,000 of basis with a value of 600,000 for 600 shares of the new corporation, Phoenix. On April 5th, Benjamin also joined an exchange $150,000 basis of assets that has a value of 200,000 and they gave Benjamin 200 shares. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna answer a series of questions. On the CPA exam, what they might do, they might give you a drop-down menu or basically a box and you have to put the answer or a drop-down menu where you would say yes, no, you know, section 351 or not section 351, so on and so forth. In this session, I'm going to answer all the questions and details. So this way you can answer any CPA exam simulation. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. If this is a pre-arranged transaction, what's the amount of gain realized, recognized? For example, on the exam, you might have two column. One is for the realized, realized asset, realized, not asset, realized gain, and one for the recognized. And you have to put, you know, how much for Mike, how much for Isabella, how much for Benjamin but it doesn't matter. The answers are the answers. So let's first compute the realized gain. Well, the realized gain is how much? Well, the realized gain is if you sold this asset, how much would you have realized? Isabella, she has an asset of 200,000, basis of 60, she would have realized 140,000. Mike would have realized 600 minus 80 equal to 520. And Benjamin would have realized 50,000, which is 200,000 minus 150. That's the realized gain. The question also asks, it's not only the realized, how much of it is recognized? In other words, how much of that gain is taxable now? And the answer is, if this was a pre-arranged transaction, it means this is section 351. How much of that gain is recognized? And the answer is none. None of the gain is recognized since this is section 351 transaction. Therefore, we answered three questions here. The amount realized, recognized, and whether this is a section 351 or not. Now, how would you input the answers? Depending on how the simulation is presented to you. Assume Isabella and Mike made the transfer three years ago and Benjamin was not, a Benjamin transfer was not prearranged. So simply put, what we are saying is this. Three years ago, Mike and Isabella contributed to the company and they control everything. And three years later, Benjamin said, I would like to join you. And Benjamin contributed those 200 shares, which is 20%. Would this be a section 351? Well, kind of you're told indirectly, this is not the contribution of Benjamin is not section 351 because it's not prearranged with them. It's not only because that's not prearranged because after the transfer, Benjamin did not control 80% of the corporation. Well, if that's not the case, it's not section 351. Benjamin would recognize $50,000 of the gain of this 50,000. It will be taxable gain of $50,000. Let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's assume, and going back to the original scenario, let's forget about scenario two. Benjamin property had a basis of, when they contributed all together, a basis of 250 with a fair market value of 200,000. What would you advise Benjamin to do under those circumstances? Well, what's, what's different here? What's different here is Benjamin asset has a loss of 50,000. Now, 
you might be saying, oh, if that's the case, we're going to have to use the built-in loss. We have to go into the built-in loss. And the answer is no. The built-in loss is only is triggered when in aggregate, in aggregate, there's a loss. In aggregate, there's no loss. Even if we give Benjamin a loss of 50,000, we still have two large gains that will wipe out the loss. So on aggregate, there's no loss. Therefore, there's no built-in loss. So here, what we're talking about is Benjamin himself is contributing an asset with a loss. What would you, Benjamin, what would you advise Benjamin to do? I would tell Benjamin, this is basically, and this is basically the new CPA exam where you have to kind of give some tax planning, tax advice. I would say, don't, don't, don't be part of this deal. If you want to contribute this asset, don't be in a prearranged because if you're in a prearranged transaction, section 351 would apply and you cannot use your loss. What would I advise Benjamin to do? I would advise Benjamin to contribute this property separately in a separate transaction or I would say sell the asset. If, we don't, if you don't need the asset specifically, sell the asset, recognize the gain, then take your cash because you know, you're going to get $200,000 cash for this asset. Take the cash and contribute the cash. This way you could recognize the gain. So don't be part of the Section 351. Isabella and Mike will benefit because they're going to defer the gains. You are not going to benefit. So sell it, contribute the cash, get the tax benefit, get 20% of the company by contributing the cash, not the asset. So you can take advantage of the tax deduction. So this is basically a CPA exam simulation that you might see about section 351 on the exam. And this is going to help you understand section 351 much, much better. Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true, false, additional exercises. That's going to help you understand this important topic, section 351. Good luck. Study hard whether you're a CPA exam candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student and stay safe.